Hello and welcome to my video where I'm going to show you how to recycle paper into beads. I personally really like the idea of making something useful out of something you would otherwise throw away and the resulting beads are actually surprisingly tough and durable. In order to make these yourself you will need the following items. In terms of the paper you need to use matte paper without any coating. It needs to be porous and quite thin, such as newspaper, matte magazine pages or regular printer paper. Basically you just want paper that's not too thick and isn't glossy or shiny. For the sandpaper I used 600 grit wet and dry sandpaper and for the glaze I used deco art triple thick gloss glaze. The wooden skewers that I used were 3mm in diameter, so I used a drill bit that was 3.5mm in diameter. And that's because you want the skewers to fit inside the beads quite snugly. For the bowl, make sure you're using something heat proof and non-porous. I personally used a glass bowl. And for the cord to hang the beads on, I personally used a 3mm by 1.5mm faux suede brown cord. And I used most of a 1m length. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is rip your paper pages into small pieces and then put them into your mixing bowl. I did two separate mixes for two separate types of paper, just to compare the two. Into one of my bowls I put magazine pages and into the other bowl I put instruction manual pages. The pages from the instruction manual are thinner and a lot more like newspaper. I only used about 4 of the magazine pages, but I used nearly 20 of the manual pages. Note that it's best to use too much paper at this point than too little. You don't want to run out later on. Next, add hot water to your bowl. You want to make sure that you're covering the paper and then leave it to soak for at least an hour. You'll want to stir it occasionally just to help break the paper down. In order to make the paper mache paste, you then need to add 240 milliliters or one cup of water and two tablespoons of plain flour to a saucepan. Place this pan over a medium heat and then stir it until it thickens. This process is actually very quick and shouldn't take more than a few minutes. The consistency you're looking for is like a wallpaper paste or a thick custard. Then once this has cooled a little bit, pour it into a pot and add two tablespoons of PVA glue. As you can see, I'm just estimating the amount. For the next step, you first need to drain as much water out of the paper pieces as you can. So squeeze the paper to release as much water as possible and then just pour the water away. Then add some of the paste. You'll need to add enough to coat the surfaces of all of the paper pieces. But it's not an exact science, you can always add more as you go. Then you just mix the paper and paste around with your hands, trying to coat all of the paper. Then take a chunk of the paper and paste mixture and squeeze it together into a bead shape. Roll it into a ball in your hands and just try to squeeze out as much excess paste as you can. Repeat this until you've made all of the mixture into spheres. I managed to make 5 out of my magazine pages and 5 out of my instruction manual pages. Lay all of the spheres out onto a non-porous surface like baking paper for instance and leave them to dry thoroughly. This will take at least a day. I left mine for a few days just to be sure. Once they're dry the beads should be very hard. 
The next step is to use a drill to carefully make a hole through the centre of each one. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using a 3.5mm drill bit and I'm just drilling through the centre of the beads by eye. Just be careful when you do this because the paper dust is flammable, so you'll want to drill a little bit at a time and pour out the paper dust as you go. You obviously don't want the drill to get too hot. It's best to hold the bead on top of a scrap of wood or something else you don't mind drilling into. However, I instead just drilled most of the way through the bead, then picked up the bead and drilled the rest of the way through. If you have a vise or something similar, you can use that instead to hold the bead still. Once you've drilled the holes, you can then use some sandpaper to smooth the surfaces. This isn't vital to do, but if you do sand the beads, then make sure you wipe off the paper dust afterwards. The beads need to be clean and dry before you paint them. Then put the beads on some wooden skewers and balance the wooden skewers so the beads are not touching any surface. And then it's time to do the painting. How you choose to paint the beads is completely up to you. You could paint patterns like stripes or dots, or paint the beads all different shades of the same colour to make a gradient. It's completely up to you. I personally wanted a layered worn effect, so I did a few layers of paint on each bead. I started with black, then I added turquoise, then yellow, then copper, then gold, and then two different shades of purple. If you're doing the same method as me, make sure you leave the paint to dry between layers. Once the paint had dried, it was then time to use 600 grit wet and dry sandpaper to uncover little speckles of the paint layers underneath. Just try to stop sanding in one place before you go through to the paper beneath. As you can see, it's quite a subtle look, but if you look closely, you can see all of the paint layers underneath. Once you're happy with the effect, clean the paint dust off the beads. The next step is to add some kind of varnish or glaze. I used Deco Art Triple Thick Glaze because it's very shiny and durable. All you have to do is paint it onto the beads. Then after 5-10 to 10 minutes, you'll need to use your paintbrush to remove or flatten any drips that have formed. You might need to do this again once more after another 5-10 to 10 minutes. Once the beads are dry, you can then remove them from the skewers. You may notice that there are little rough areas around the holes, so you can either use sandpaper to remove these, or as I did, use little scissors to snip off those extra bits. Next, you just need to string the beads onto the cord or chain that you're using for your necklace. I chose some faux suede cord and I used a yarn needle to pull it through the beads. I ended up needing some pliers to help me pull the suede through the beads because it was quite a snug fit. I then spaced out the beads on the cord and then tied a couple of sliding knots to make it into an adjustable necklace. To do this you need to take the left strand over the right strand of the cord, then take it under and over the front again and under 
then over the left strand of cord, then bring it back through the two loops of cord you've just created and pull tight. You then need to do the mirror image of this knot on the other side. So take the right strand over the left strand and then under and over and under again. Then take it over the right strand. Bring it back through the two loops you've just created and tighten. If you need to, you can then cut off any excess cord. And that's it, your necklace is now complete. Here are a few more photos of the finished result. I really hope you enjoyed this project and thank you very much for watching.